apologized. They would have gone their merry ways. We would have <laughs> put a plaque in your names and moved on. But the vision that you want is for one that we will live in, that we will um, inherit. And therefore, I am disappointed that there has not been a greater youth presence to this whole exercise. Yes. However, in terms of youth um, unemployment, it's one of our biggest burdens. And we have recommendations as young persons. We know what we want. And so some of the things we want to see happen going forward are as follows. We would like to see policies that clearly articulate support and incentives towards youth entrepreneurship, which includes programs that create and facilitate credit, finance, and which eases the bureaucratic process that we usually have to go through and acknowledges that entrepreneurship is not always misused by youth. We also want to see internship become a regular thing, something which is not done as a secondary um, um, thought to um, getting points towards your SBAs, but rather something which is paid for, which is covered by social and labor rights, and which which would one day translate into full employment for young persons. We want also to take the advantage of labor mobility, the ability to move across various borders around the region and take full advantage of jobs, take full advantage of every, every meaningful opportunity within the Caribbean region and we need this to be done in an area where we have access to borders, we can have equal access to all social benefits, and of course transfer our pension benefits at the end of the day. We also want to speak of a legal framework that secures a percentage of young people when hiring both in the private and public sector. Too often, the requirements are too heavy for young persons leaving school. And with effective apprenticeship programs, with um, effective internship programs, and a percentage allocated to youth employment, we will see more young persons leaving um, um, schools with, with the prerequisites and being able to be integrated um, into the, the labor force. Also, of course, for this to happen, we would have to speak of education reform. But I'll save that comment, and I'm hoping as we go along, I'll be able to say a little bit more on that. Thank you so much. Very, thank you very much, Eleanor. I made a commitment to a gentleman. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. I wanted to make that point from morning. The <laughs> current economic development model that we are currently embracing produces um, a very large, or basically produces the informalization, informalization of the Caribbean society. We have the informalization of the economy, so we have a very large informal economy. The social, informalization of social institutions and construction, informalization of the workplace. How does the panel see the informal economy going forward into 2050? and what sorts of policies and, and, and um, strategies we are going to use to integrate the informal economy into the formal econ economy going forward, because it's an important part of our current development model. Agreed. Thank you so very much. Mr. I, I, Mr. Moderator, I'm here, and there are two people on this side of the room who, from the very beginning of the Q&A, okay. uh, yes. wanted to make an intervention. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. You have a tendency to drift only to your right. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to correct that. Huh? I was a bad cricketer. We call it a random walk. Yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of specific questions to the panel. I think they are doing great work, but I think there's a grave danger, which we experience as well, of doing a good analysis and suggesting the way forward. Excellent. I think there is another step which is very crucial if we're going to push the Caribbean forward. Absolutely. Where is the evidence of these changes? Do you see any evidence in education that we could build upon that will create reform? Do you see any evidence in the institutions 
that will allow us to go forward? Is there any country that is on a path that tells us that we are heading in the right direction? So I want them to be very specific. Where is the evidence? And if there is no evidence, do we have to invent the institutions? One last point I want to make. The Caribbean is going through a serious process of adjustment. If you live in Jamaica, you know how intense and difficult this process is. But they have gone through this before. The question is, how do you lock in the gains of adjustment so that in the next round, you do not suffer from adjustment fatigue? Thank you. Thank you so very much. Josanne, you're the second person there. Can I? Um, yes, across there. And listen. We can't do dissertations within this thing. We really need to have some succinct contributions and to use the feedback mechanism with all of the preamble. We're getting a lot of preambles and not necessarily zeroing on a specific question or a contribution to add value or challenge something that has been presented at the head table. I remind you of that. Thank you so much, Usain. Thank you. 2015 is a pretty long time. <laughs> but by 2015, I would like to see the Confederation of Latin America and the Caribbean in full throttle. By 2015, I would like to see this region having the highest level of literacy per capita. By 2015, I would like to see the Caribbean Court of Justice in full throttle with all the members of the region as part of this vehicle. In 2015, I would like to see Cuba playing the role it should have been playing a long time ago in leading the region and to be a significant leader in the South. By 2015, 2050, I would like to see the social, economic, and political system being redesigned, or already redesigned, to include construct of the two dominant ideologies. Because we have a situation where we are speaking here and I'm getting the impression that we are satisfied with the socio-economic system that we have on political system that we have in place. It has failed. It is an old engine. And we need to recognize that. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the... no. Hello. Please. Hi. Yes, I, I just wanted to make a comment related to some of the earlier comments people made and the team made. They made a series of recommendations, um, all of which may be valid, but I feel that there are some other aspects that are less tangible um, and, and, and more intangible but important. The question of ecosystem. Anytime we talk about ecosystem, so far what I've seen, you speak about a business ecosystem for innovation. However, I think one of the things that the Caribbean will need in terms of convergence is a new ecosystem in general, in different spaces, whether that be within schools, within homes, in the Caribbean at large, we need to look at the ecosystem that we have because it's not terribly nurturing. And so even things like human rights and a Caribbean position on human rights is one of the issues. Um, you know, the way in which we share and see each other questions of identity, questions of diversity. Um, these things remain undre uh, um, un have not been dealt with adequately, but they will in fact um, still be the factors that stand in the way or act as barriers to any kind of convergence. So I just put it on the table. Um, th there are some things that can be done right now to improve the situation as we make a walk towards 2050. Thank you so very much. I mean, yes. Uh, just, just to quickly respond to that particular issue, when we engaged the consultancy team, it was not for us to come up with a complete picture. It's just not possible. I mean, we have 
brilliant West Indians who can come up with certainly better ideas than us. But what we wanted to do was to use this forum to stimulate a conversation on the vision for the region that we would like to see and the region we want. And in fairness to all the participants, I mean, I think the engagement is certainly helping all of us think through that process. So Ryan, would you like to, to respond to some of the issues raised? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of comments. Maybe start with the, with the latter comment first. Uh, yes, I fully agree. The social context of, of our social uh, uh, ecosystems is extremely important. Uh, one of the challenges we have uh, in the Caribbean is that uh, too often there's that barrier which goes back to the point of that informal economy that we have 60 to 65 percent of the Caribbean is an informal economy. That means that there are barriers there, whether they're physical barriers, financial barriers, psychological barriers, uh, in which people are not registering their businesses, they're going on in their own, which at the same time uh, indicates something really important. And, and this is a point, it goes back to my, what my colleague said before, and it has resonated for a day already here. I, I have this very strong sensation that if the Caribbean keeps looking for problems, it's going to find its problems. I have a very strong sensation that if we keep looking at barriers, we're going to find barriers and we're going to create more barriers. But I also believe that the Caribbean has a lot of strengths. I believe that the strengths are maybe more tacit, more indigenous, uh, not formally part of those formal business ecosystems as we've traditionally defined them in more Western-centric ways. I believe that instead of speaking of youth unemployment, which I understand is extremely important, and youth crime, I would rather change that language and speak about the youth talent. I would rather speak about the creativity that we have in our society that we're not tapping into. Now to do that, we're going to have to transform the system. I also believe that simple reform will not be sufficient because a reform of something assumes that the basic foundation is wealth. Now I wasn't here 50 years ago, 